Hey, hey you still gonna do the bench test on this? Yeah. So you can see what's hook it up just like a car. I need the jump bar. Oh, yeah, shit. Well, when? I, you know what's funny? I tried the same thing you did, but for some reason it wouldn't work. Like I turned Well, I want to know what you did and why you did and why it didn't work the way you did. Right, we're gonna set it up the same way a car is set up. Right. You Except for one thing, it's grounded on the frame, but we're gonna ground it with the. See what you got. All right, what did you just hook up? Main power. So this right. is to the solenoid. So the big gauge wire that go there, is, mm -hmm. that's you basically substituting it with that. Mm -hmm. Or simulating, rather. Now we're gonna put the two screws in the starter. That's where we get our ground from off the frame, but you're actually using. The ground jump box. Yeah. So that's the case. So right there. Wherever you think you got some good ground. Yeah, you got 12 Yeah, it's already 12 volts. All right. Work. Now, right. Even with 12 volts in the ground, no, you good. Oh. But even with 12 volts in the ground on the start, it's not going to start. Someone have to command it to start. You got to stick it there. So right, your solenoid. That. That's what yeah, that, yeah. remember that yellow wire I told you? 12 volts have to go to that from that. Yeah, ISO yeah. relay we was mm. talking about. That's where that wire goes. All that right, so it goes. Pin here, eighty-seven yeah. out of the starter relay. Yeah, comes straight to here. Mm. When you turn the key, twelve volts will hit that. And if twelve volts is here on the main, mm. and the button, the starter is grounded, it'll mm. start. So you're gonna find a way to get twelve volts in the solenoid and make it run. How are you gonna do that? Yeah, you can use a screwdriver if this, but the connector is surrounded by this, yeah. so. That's how we did back in the day. We used a screwdriver to get that connection. Ooh, there we go. What you do? <laughs> so I put the um, the wire right here between the clamp where it actually bites at and makes contact. That's just for 12 volts purposes, right? Right, and then I just bent the wire enough to where it actually makes contact with the solenoid and then grounded hold, it. Grunt, touch it and hold the starter. Let's see, see if it's, it's a good starter. Okay. You got to hold the starter, you can't do it. See, you touching ground. What do you know? Yeah, That's I mean, not a bad starter. No, I mean, plunges, it shoots out, and actually yeah. allows the starter to move, so. So, but what is what is this? Where did that come from? On the car? On the car, that comes from the, uh, I mean, the main power source. No, the not the main, no, this wire right here. Oh, oh, uh, I mean, to the uh, solenoid? Yeah. Uh, Honestly, I'm not even sure. Yeah, from the starter relay. Remember what we right. talked about? Yeah, 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 yeah. When you turn the key, or if it's a push start, or turn the key. Right. If the starter relay is working, 12 volts from the fuse box. Right. 12 volts is going to come to here. Right. And if power supply already here and ground already here, mm -hmm. the starter is supposed to start. Supposed to start. Supposed to so if you get a car with no crank, mm -hmm. that's what that's the, this is the best thing to go to, okay. in my opinion. Go straight to the starter relay. Mm -hmm. Like I say, you can jump 12 volts straight to this mug and mm -hmm. see if it run. If it run, you're probably not the starter. Yes, yeah, the relay. If it don't That's run, chances are. Yeah, so always just, just try to remember. These two is state are going to be there always. Right. Yeah, hopefully, you're going to always have 12 volts with this screw, the little bolt. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. And this is nothing more than the two bolts. They go through here, yeah. grounded through the transmission. So the starter getting this ground through the transmission bell housing. Right. And the 12 volt source coming from that cable. Only thing left is this. It goes to the solenoid, which comes from the uh, uh, starter relay. Right. So now if you, the best way to test it, or some people test it, they put a test light. They climb under there, unplug this. Yeah. Okay, start it. Yeah, put a test light. If, if that test light light. Yeah. And the start ain't working, chances are you got a bad starter. Yeah. This one had intermittent problems, so we can't trust that no way. Yeah. There's no way to test for intermittent starter operations, so we screwed from that standpoint. If you suspect this got intermittent problem, you need another starter. Yeah. All right, yeah, we're done with that. Go ahead. Let's see. Uh -huh. There you go. All right. Armature comes out and grabs. What is that grabbing? Uh, the, the, uh, uh, spindle? No. No. When this come out, it has to oh, grab something. Oh, it's grabbing on the flywheel. Flywheel. Yeah, Flex yeah. plate. Flywheel is a stick. 
Oh, so flex plate. Yeah, you yeah. can call it. I mean, <laughs> so I mean everybody it's calls the same, it a flex. It's, it's the same, same damn thing, yeah. but you know, some people on the internet would give you hell about it. Yeah, this comes out, bzz, grab the flywheel. And that's what spins it, over the engine. And, the ignition you know. should take over. Mm -hmm. This is what spins over the engine, but at the same time, power supply going to the ignition. Yeah. Meaning, okay, you can let go because the ignition done caught up. Yeah. And now it should run on its own. Mm hmm. But you need that oomph from the starter to get going. Yeah. No different than a clutch. You ever, you ever, you ever started a, a car that has a clutch? Yeah. But the battery did. I'm oh. talking about using the clutch. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't you have to uh, push it? First? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, you gotta push it. It's basically like you gotta like get the momentum first. That's to that's the, the same thing, yeah. same scenario. Because on that on a stick car, mm -hmm. the flywheel is a. Uh, when you let up off the clutch, and uh, you you rolling, yeah. the flywheel turns, right. so the ignition is gonna catch up with it and right. keep it running. That's how we used to start out our, our cars when uh, Man, when, uh, uh, when the battery was dead or something because yeah yeah because on the back then everything wasn't computer driven yeah so once you get going the battery is done the alternator gonna take over anyway. I think that's uh, I don't seen uh, quite a few videos about that. Actually. Starting they clutch up that way. Yeah, it's crazy, man. <laughs> this one of the trainees working on this guys. Let me explain something to you. I know there's nothing more frustrating than hearing a ticking noise, but getting it tore down and not finding a ticking noise, not being able to feel it. Okay, that would frustrate the hell out of any mechanic. But here's the thing, guys. Let me explain something to you, like I had to explain to him. At no given time will two valves on both uh, or two adjacent cylinders be open or closed, for that matter. Okay, this camshaft rotates like this and it will open and close valve uh, when it's supposed to. So when this happened guys or when you know you heard a tick but you don't see it or feel it you need to rotate this engine like I did. I asked for his breaker bar and, uh, and I rotate this. What I did was took the lobes off of the other remaining rocker arms. That way when you go down here and do your JT field test I like to call it make sure the lobes are off of the rock arm in question. Alright so yeah I felt it then. So keep in mind you got to rotate the lobes up off of the rocker arm and then do your JT field test all right that's the best way to find out if the rocker arms are coming apart or not